Hi, uh, sorry, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't realise I had a couple of people tuning in. Uh, I'm just trying to work out how I can put this onto Facebook so that uh, people know I'm doing it. I've got some new um, hardware that I'm just trying, and I wanted to to just test it out, see how it looks. So I'll just put a post on Facebook, and uh, we'll see how we go for there. Right, what I'm, uh, I'm hoping to show you today is uh, I'm going to the River Warden tomorrow for a bit of fishing and apparently the mayfly's already started there. So uh, what I'm going to show you is this little mayfly emerger. Hopefully the quality's not too bad. So in the vise I already have a Hanak Triple Three barbless hook at size 10. Um, it's ideal for an emerging pattern this and I'm going to be using uh, some of the fish on Ultimate Tine Silk, as you can see here, it's a light olive and it's quite a, a thin thin thread, but it does still split, which will be important later on. So I'm just going to get plenty of wax onto this and see how I get on. Oops, I forgot my binoculars. There'll not be much time done without these, I'm afraid. Yeah, caught me on the hop a bit. <laughs> Uh, so I've been I've been spending about an hour or so setting this uh, hardware up just to see how how it works and stuff and uh, what I've done is I've managed to get I think my DSLR to work through my laptop and I'm able to do this live uh, and and now that I'm doing it I'm thinking I should have picked a much easier fly to tie than this because there's all, all sorts of things can go wrong with it. So I've just um, got my thread onto the hook and I'm going to bring it down to just about there. So it's just as the hook's starting to bend away there. And uh, I'm going to use some elk hair. Just two, three fibres of elk hair. I've already cut little bits off. And I'm going to just line up the tips as best I can. It doesn't have to be dead straight um, and it's only going to be short. So I'll line them up to the hook. I'm going to pinch them in. Get a couple of turns. Have a look. Yeah, that'll do. Maybe a wee bit longer than I'd like. The emerging... The emerging... Um, fly takes a little bit of time for the the tail to develop on a mayfly so now that I've got it out slightly I'm going to just no I'm not <laughs> uh, I'm going to just try and encourage the tails to part uh, next I'm going to use for the body of this fly I'm using some moose mane and I've got it here, I've selected um, two or three strips from here already and I'm just going to grab the, the order I want them in so they're different colours and uh, with a moose mane you can spend ages actually delving through these different fibres trying to find the right shade um, I've got some that I'm happy with here so I'm just going to trim away the waist ends there and I'm going to catch this in the length of the body so a couple of a couple of turns just to catch this in and then I'm going to wind that all the way down to the start again uh, it's just we're not long out of lockdown actually and it's it's great to be able to get out just in time for the start of probably the most iconic hatch of the season uh, certainly down here on the chalk streams, the mayfly hatches are uh, they're known the world over. I'm just building up a little bit of taper into my body here before I eventually stop there. I'm happy enough with that, and then I'm going to bring my moose mane around 
and you get a really interesting body when you me and it's, uh, it's a great material to work with. So I'm just nudging that together so it um, behaves for me. You can be quite harsh with this material, it's, uh, it's fairly robust and I'm probably going to regret saying that when I snap this off and it all coils back on me. But, you know, you don't do this um, going live carry on without some mishaps. So I'm just bringing that round. And there'll be a whoop of relief when I get it up to near my thread. And I can get it secured down. So I'll probably get one more turn in there, which will do me. And I'm going to walk that down. Uh, I've just uh, noticed there's a chat from Mongolia on and uh, when I look at the YouTube stuff and that and I see all the different countries that people uh, visit from, I, I do enjoy it. It's great to see people from all over the world tuning in and having a look at it. So uh, I've done the body now. It doesn't really need a great deal of protection but I'm going to add a little coat of UV varnish. Very light, makes the body shine a bit. Uh, which means that the fly will look like it's got a bit more life to it. Catches the light, providing the sun shining tomorrow. And that should do it. So there wasn't very much resin on my brush. I don't want to weigh the fly down too much. At the end of the day, I want it to sit just inside the surface film. I'm just going to cure that off now. And what I'm hoping I can do, I'm not very sure what I'm doing actually, but um, I, not with a fly, I know what I'm doing with a fly, but I mean with YouTube. So what I'm hoping I can do after I've finished is go in and trim the video so that the first minute or so of faffing that I had um, isn't, isn't in the video. But that's uh, looking okay. So for uh, the body, before I do anything else, I've, I've mixed a couple of dubbins. So I've got some of this stuff. This is snowshoe rabbit foot dubbin. And as you can see, it's quite a bright yellow and it's a bit too bright for what I want. So what I've done is I've mixed that with some of this stuff. Uh, this is from Get Slotted and it's like a creamy dubbin. And what I've ended up with is, uh, is this. So this is the dubbin I've been I've been using for the head. I wanted that sort of hint of creamy yellow which uh, the Danica down our way have and um, I get that by mixing these two together. If I just use the yellow it might be too bright. So I only want a tiny little bit of dubbing initially and I'm going to catch that onto my thread. That's all I need. I just need a couple of tons at the back here. And that's grand. So that's looking not too bad. Next then I'm going to add the wing. And what I've got is some uh, coastal beer here. It's been dyed a picrid colour. It's lovely. Got a, a lovely hint of yellow to it, which is great. Now to save me banging about on the vice, I did manage to do some preparation and I I've already stacked the deer here. Now before you put it in your stacker, I would always recommend that you comb out the fibres and just make sure you've got all the gunk away. So when you stack it, the tips fall into line for you. So I'll just grab that with my thumb and forefinger in my left hand and try and pull away any of the broken ends that are in there. I'm going to change it over to my right hand and then dress it up to the hook. And I want it to come roughly just by the start of the tail. 
So that looks okay. I'm just going to lean over and trim away my waist off camera. Then I can dress this up to the fly like so. Once I've caught that in, I want to come through the broken ends and before I go any further I'll just check it, yeah it's looking okay and then I want to just clamp down on my broken ends so as many turns as required it's the beauty of using these uh, very thin tine silks you, you get away with a multitude of sins because you're able to uh, get lots of wraps in so happy enough with that the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of natural snowshoe which I've got here uh, big fan of this material I don't want much though so I'm just looking for a tiny little bit that I'm going to add as an overwing which I've got here and even that's probably too much so I'm going to take half that away and that's that's more like it just a little pinch so I'm going to dress that up to the hook and catch it in. And I can come in with my snips, tidy that up a little bit at the front. Yeah, not bad. Looking pretty good. So next then, what I want to do is get some of my dubbing that I've, I've created out of the two blends. Just um, take a pinch of it, thin it out a bit, maybe need a little bit more than that. And then make it into like a, a sausage shape. You can use a clip if you like, I'm not going to bother. Uh, mostly because my clip's at home. <laughs> along with my dubbing needle. So I've got this needle here that I've managed to find. And what I'm going to do is run the needle along the back of the thread. And this will, this helps flatten it out. If need be, you can give your bobbin a little uh, anti-clockwise spin and it opens up the thread. So I've just stuck the needle in there. Got the thread open. And I'm going to insert the dubbin. There we go. So spin that up. Uh, hi Starsky, the vice is a Jan Tavek rotary vice. Um, it, unfortunately they're, they're not made anymore. Um, Jan is, is, I think he's become a, a little bit ill and um, he's no longer creating them so I don't think the vices are readily available anymore. You know, you might get some that are maybe in stock in shops, but I think they're pretty rare to get a hold of now. But uh, I, I like the vice. It's got a couple of it has got a couple of shortfalls though. Uh, I've recently got into having a go at tube flies, and, and it's very difficult to do with this vice. Or, or I've certainly found it, probably isn't difficult to do, but I've found it difficult to do because the attachments don't fit. So I've just got my dubbed head in now. I'm going to bring that through right up to the eye of the hook. Pull back the edge and I've got it just where I want it. Now I don't want too much of the thread showing, so I'm only going to use as few turns as I need. Add a little bit of UV resin. Another couple of turns. And then with a whip finish tool, I can come in and just finish that off. Pull it tight. Snip away the end. Then I can just cure that off. I'm really looking forward to getting out on the river. I, um, I had the opportunity to go yesterday actually, but 
in the end up, I, I didn't go, and uh, it just makes me all the more excited for going tomorrow. Uh, a lot of my pals were out yesterday on the still waters, and uh, they had a grand time. Uh, a lot more of my pals up in Scotland didn't get to go fishing at all, so uh, my deepest sympathies for them. Just make sure I've cured that. And there we go, a little emerging mayfly nymph. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It's, it's only something quick. I just wanted to to see how it would um, work with the live stream. I don't know if any of you guys that are watching it at the minute can just uh, let me know what the picture quality is like and the sound quality. I'd really appreciate it. Hi Carl, how you doing mate? I see your channel's coming on, you're doing well there. Just need to keep going pal. I'm just going to uh, adjust the camera now, so I'll see if I can get my mush in it. Bear with me. Uh, I think that seems to be working okay. So the quality is not too bad. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, Marco, I think that's because um, because of the stream, it, it reduces the size of the image to get the quality. But what I'm keen on is that uh, it doesn't, it's, it's not pixelated and you can still see exactly what I'm doing, uh, is the real thing. I'm going to give uh, the Facebook Live a go with the camera as well and just see, see if that um, works too. But uh, I'm, I'm pleased the fly went well because I was sitting doing it and I thought oh, I'll just give it a go and see what happens. But um, these don't always go really well, you know, sometimes the moose mane snaps or you know, the thread doesn't split properly, it's it's very rarely, it goes as smooth as it did for the video there, but uh, I'm, I'm glad it did. Yeah, I'll need to, I'll need to see if I can um, to adjust that, I don't know, I, could you just try going full screen with it and see what, see what it looks like if you go full screen? All right, thanks, Carl. I, I see that. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it looks a little bit dull to me as well. The the picture looks a bit dull. Right. What what I'll probably do. Sasha, you wouldn't know if I'd drop dead. You wonder where I was. <laughs> Same. So yeah, I need to try and try and alleviate that, and I'm not quite sure how to do it. But I'm sure there'll be some uh, YouTube video out there that'll will tell me how I can get the the screen to come full size. I don't quite understand why it's doing that. Um, it could be the resolution, but we'll see how we get on. But uh, thanks very much for the help, folks, and um, hopefully the next time it'll be a little bit more polished and I'll be a bit better prepared. So I'm going to uh, end the stream now, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all 
with the the usual fly tying Tuesday. I, I can't remember what it is. I think I'm, I think I'm going to do a video on the sorry, not video. I'm going to do a video. That's what it is. I'm sure you would, darling, because there'd be nobody to give you money. <laughs> yeah, hi DC. I, I wasn't going to actually um, do a stream. I usually wear a blue t-shirt, which is, is much better background for time flies. You, you get to see um, a lot more detail, but I was just because I've been playing with the hardware to try and do this for about an hour and I thought, you know what, I'll set it all up, I might as well give it a go. So that's why um, I'm wearing this t-shirt, it's just something that I had on when I came in. Uh, it's not what I usually use for my uh, time videos, I usually use a blue t-shirt and, and that works well. And I think um, a lot of the other guys you see that uh, do YouTube videos that they wear blue shirts and stuff because it's it's just the best colour to stand out on. Cheers, Robert and you, mate. Take care. Okay, folks, I'm going to head off. Thanks very much, and I'll try and alleviate the problem with the uh, the small screen in the corner next next time I'm on. Bye for now.